After Effects is not well known for its white balance functions. However, in this video I'll show you not only how you can identify if your footage is white balanced correctly, but also I'll show you two methods which you can use to remove a really strong colour cast from any footage so you can make it usable once again. Now in order to white balance correctly in After Effects, we need to know how we can actually check to see if it is actually white balance and if by how much it's out. So really we need to have some point of reference in the actual scene where we have shades of grey which are not tainted with a particular sort of shade. So what I have here in this particular shot is an x right colour card. And this is what you should do with most of your shots. Put a card or something like this in the shot just at the beginning it only has to be there for a few seconds and then you can take it out and then you've got a reference point to use later on now the thing about these cards is that they are completely balanced there is no color cast to these whites and mid grays and then blacks unlike pieces of paper or other bits of white in the scene you don't know if they have a slight cast of a red green or the blue this has no cast so you can be assured that it is a quality uh, reference point. Now the easy way to work out if it is actually balanced is actually just use our colour picker which we've got over here and wherever the mouse is pointing to that will give you then a reading of the red, green and blue. Now I've currently got it set to percent. If you go to the little panel drop down you can see that you can actually change it to other settings but I've got it currently set to percentage. So if we look at this and I hover over this white point here, we can see that it's saying 82, 82.784. So that means that this white at the top end here, of the bright end, is virtually completely balanced. It's a little bit out, but it's very close. In the mid-range, we're looking at 66, 66, 67, thereabouts. So we're within 1% of uh, balance there. And then if we go to the bottom end, the blacks here, we've got 13, 13 and 14, within about 1% there. So now using this method, we can now check with the different types of process to get the white balance to make sure that we are actually doing the right job and we're not using just our eyes alone to sort of see whether it looks about right because our eyes really are not that good at detecting subtle changes in colour. Having something like this or using a vector scope or the uh, RGB parades like you do in Premiere will give you a much more accurate way of measuring how you actually get your white balance done correctly. Now the first type of effect I'm going to use is called levels. But first of all, let's have a look at the actual scene we've got. We've got a scene here. It's the same scene as I shot with the auto white balance, but this time I set it with a 2.5K balance and as you can see it's come out very blue because it was expecting to be shot under a tungsten lighting and if we actually check our color picker and we'll see how far out we actually are bear in mind these should all be balanced if we look at the whites the white here we're 60 for reds green is 78 and blue is 98 so it's nearly topping out on the blue if we go down to the mids We've got 40 for reds, nearly 60 for green, and 87 for blue. Again, we're way up on the blue and down on the red. And down at the bottom, on the blacks, we've got 6.7 for red, 10 for green, and 30 for blue. So we're way out. So what we need to do is now bring in the levels, and we find the levels in our effects and presets, and we type in L-E-V-L-E-S levels and under color correction we just want the levels we add that to the scene and then we'll just wait for it to refresh the histogram and there it is now we have a histogram showing the overall brightness in the scene and we can see we're actually not missing much in the way of information as far as brightness is concerned this is the darks this is the mids and this is the, the lights the highs here at this end thing about levels is we can actually break this down into R, G and B and we can look at them individually. In fact, if you look at this little toggle button here, you can then see the blues, the reds and the greens superimposed on each other. But that really doesn't tell us a great deal. But if we go into 
this and then say look at the reds now we know the reds are low we can see that we've got most of the information is in the dark end through to the mids and in the highs it's just missing altogether so we've lost a lot of information here so to bring that back all we need to do is to pull this slider down until we get to the red the start of the red information which is about there and you can see the reds are now coming back into the scene if we look now at our uh, color picker, we've now got 82%, 78 and 98. So we're getting much more balanced, 50, 60 and 88. We need to now to sort out the blue end. So if we go to the blue and we look at this one, we'll see there's not really much missing because we've got blue all the way across. It was heavily, heavily saturated with blue. So what we can do is, first of all, we can take down the level of blue. And we can do that. We can't move this around too much here, but we can take it down a bit on the actual output. So if we look at this now, we're 85%, 81, and then 78. So if we take that down a little tad more, we're now 82, 81.7. So the reds and the blues are getting much more balanced now. Now if we look at the mids, we'll see that we've still got Blue is quite high, 72 compared to 55 and 59. Now, this control in the middle here, if we move it to the left, it adds blue. If we move it to the right, it takes it away. And this is controlling where the mid-level of blue is. We want to take it away, so we want to move it to the right. So in our mids range here, we're 55 on red. Blue, we want to be 60. We want to bring that down a little bit, get it into the 60s mids there we are 65 we're coming down a bit more down a bit more so we're getting more on the actual blues it's coming down the we could pull this up actually on the bottom end here so when we check our bottom we've now got blue night that's quite low that is so we've pulled that in there bring that back a little bit this is going to be a bit of tweaking around on the bottom end we've got six eight and ten so now we know look at the greens let's have a look at our green channel green is missing a little bit of information at the top so if we bring that in there and now let's see where we've got and our top end we've got 81 83 and 81 green still a little bit high so we'll pull that back to pull out the green 81, 88, 82, so we're not too bad there. Mids, 55, 52, 65. So we can go up on the reds a little bit again. So we tweak the red, and we want to go up on the red, so we'll bring it down a little bit. Now we're 60, 61, and 65, so we're getting there. And now on the blacks, we are 12, 11, and blue. So we want to push the blue up on the bottom end here so we can then bring in bring in the blue we want to go that way actually now we're 10 10 and 9 we're quite close we're pretty close so let's have a look and see how far out we are now between this scene which we've just set and then the actual auto white balance version and there that's auto that's the scene we've just created that's pretty close even if i say so myself that's pretty close if you didn't know the difference if you didn't know which one was which i don't think you'd be able to tell the difference between the two so that's how close we can actually get using levels and using a reference and we're effectively using the whites the mids and the blacks and our color picker and then tweaking the levels accordingly we can get a very close match using the levels control now, unlike Premiere, there isn't a dedicated white balance program or application in After Effects, but there is actually an application, although it's not very well known, that will do color neutralization. In other words, it will remove a cast or a tint from a footage or an image. And this is actually made by Psychor, and you'll find it as CC color neutralizer now actually it's under the effects and presets so you can either type it in or you can look for it under color correction if we come down to color correction and in here you'll then see 
CC Color Neutralizer. It's a 32-bit effect, and it's bundled with After Effects as standard. And all you need to do is just apply it to your footage to actually start working with it. Now, the piece of footage we've got here is uh, one which was shot on my Panasonic GH4, and it was set at 2,500 uh, Kelvin color balance which is giving it a very blue hue i've also got another one which was at 10,000 color balance which is giving it a reddish hue but it's not quite as bad and then we've obviously we've got our reference one which was shot with the auto white balance so we know what we're actually looking for so we'll go to the blue shifted one which is a two and a half kelvin one and we'll add the color neutralizer and all we need to do is just drag it onto it and it's now there Nothing's happening until we actually set it up. If we go over to the effect control here, we'll see we've got three color pickers, and these relate to the shadows, the mids, and the highlights. And this is a great thing about this, that it will attempt to fix the color shift across those three areas, whereas the auto white balance in Premiere only has one color picker, and therefore it's a bit more limited in what it can actually do. This can do quite a very good job actually and all you need to do to make it work is just to click on the eyedropper on the shadows and then pick something dark in here now i could pick on the color picker here but instead i'm going to pick something in here instead so just like it would be if you didn't have a color uh, chart in the actual scene and i'll pick something maybe in the shadows over here well i'll tell you what i'll go over here under this bush and that's quite dark over there so that's one then we'll pick the highlights and we'll go to the door and pick that one. And then we'll go to the mids and we'll pick the road. That's a nice gray road there. And there we are. And that's now picked that up quite well. Now, let's see the difference between that and the auto white balance. There is still a difference. It's still shifted to the blue. Now, again, I'm cheating a little bit here because I've got the color chart, so I can check to see by how much it's actually shifted out by. So we go on the highlights and we'll see it's 72 for red, 79 for green, and 84 for blue. So it's not far out. In the mids, it's 55, 62, and 71. So again, we're low on red, high on blue. And down in the shadows, we're red and green are balanced, and in blues up on there. So tweak this a bit more we can actually come over to the control panels and we can drop down these three controls here for reds midtones and highlights and you can see by how much it's shifted the color balance so on the uh, if we go to the highlights first we'll work backwards because i can go from the highlights and back across to here we'll look at the blue and it's knocked it down by minus 22 and it's pushed the red up so on the highlights, we could see that we needed the blue to come down and the red to go up a little bit. So if we just drop that down, we can pull the blue down and we'll push the red up. Now let's see. We're now 78, 80, 79, 80. We're very close to it now. I'd say due to the variations in there, that's probably okay. So we'll just fold up that highlight one. We'll go to the mid-tones now. Mid-tones will be these sort of gray areas here, or could be our gray area we picked here. Let's see, we've got 56, 62, and 70. So reds wanna go up, blues wanna come down. So again, reds, blues wanna come down, reds wanna go up. Now let's see where we are. 61, 61, 64, 56, 52, 52, 55. So we're almost there. Maybe take a little bit more blue out if we're looking on something which is a balanced uh, gray here. And we've got 47, 44, 49. Yes, almost there. So we can say that's almost right. Now in the shadows, let's have a look. We were blue was quite high so we'll pull down the blue a bit more on that one you can see the red had been pushed up a bit now let's have a look it's getting there a bit more on the blue 15 17 15 a little bit more off the blue 15 16 around about that now then let's see about the the difference now between the two and that's the difference between the auto white balance and now the tweaked color neutralizer effect and we're pretty close again 
if you didn't have a reference in here, you could tweak it by eye and you could get it pretty accurate. We've got a reference here, so we are cheating a little bit. But if you don't have a reference, all you need to do to get this to work is just to pick the, the uh, a dark area, a medium area and a light area. And you'll find that you can really shift that color. Now, if we look at something which hasn't got such a strong cast to it, we'll look at this 10,000 one and we'll do the same again and we'll just see how this works. The bigger the shift, the more work you've got to do to get it to come back. Now let's see about this one. We'll do the same again. We'll pull it from under the bush there, from the road and then from the door. And this one, let's have a look here. We've now got 78, 77, 72. 58, 58, 56, 26, 25, 24, 12, 10, 11. Pretty close first time round, and we haven't done anything else on the balancing there. Let's have a look at the difference between the two. There's a little bit more color in there. You could probably say there's a little bit more red, which probably shows up uh, in there, in the highlights and the mids. Well, mids actually are okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. It's actually done pretty good job. Pretty close, pretty close. In fact, if you wanted to, you could probably take the saturation down a little tiny bit and that would be about it. There are other couple of things here you can blend with the original so you can bring back some of the blue effect or the red effect that was originally there and special, which you can move the black point and white point and shift them a little bit. So that'll bring back a bit more of the red on the black points and then on the white points, it'll bring that back a little bit more there again a little bit of tweaking here and there but otherwise this is actually a very good color neutralizer or white balance app and there is an extra bit here which i won't cover here because it's going to take a bit too long you can get this to work in premiere it doesn't ship with premiere but there is a little bit of a hack where you can take the file from after effects and put it into premiere and i'll probably do a separate video for this on how to get this then to work in premiere and then you'll have the color neutralizer in premiere which is probably better than the white balance in the fast color corrector but otherwise that is another very good way to actually do your white balancing in after effects so I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, don't forget to rate, share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, don't forget to put them in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also to our new Facebook page here. We also have a free ebook available on how to set up your own home video studio here. And also don't forget to hop on over to Video Hyphen Alchemy where we can follow up on this video. So my name's Paul Schlitto. This has been a Video Alchemy production. And until the next time, see you later. Bye. What is that? What's that? Who's that? Look. Are you over there? Is that the point that you don't? Hey. Oh, I camera. I knew are you? Are you? Hey, what's going on? What are you playing with with my microphone, eh? Hey, what's going on? It. Oh no, 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 no! You're not meant to do that. Oh dear. <laughs>